Nice and fresh, nice and fresh, nice and fresh. Even in the midst of national mourning, these London markets are bustling. This area has long been home to many diverse communities, and here, the feelings towards the British Crown are complicated. Those are my people that they are colonising, you know. I am the demographic. So for me, it's like acknowledging what they've done and making moves to fix that and reverse what they've done would be the best possible thing, in my opinion. Coco Zhao was born and raised in the UK, but finds it difficult to respect or admire the royal family. King Charles, he doesn't have to pay any taxes on the palace that he's just inherited. All of those taxes could have been used for schools, people who don't have homes. Here, many feel the royals should acknowledge the painful legacies of the past. In a place such as Kenya, where I come from, you see a lot of death. Uh, tr torture and trauma that is accruing to independence and liberation leaders. These are some of the things that you see in that period, in the early years of Queen Elizabeth's reign. In this vibrant corner of East London, the views towards the British monarchy range from anger to ambivalence, but it captures the challenge for the new king to represent a country of many different faiths and cultures. You know, we believe that uh, race equality um, and black representation is actually one of his interests too, which is actually shown uh, over many years. As the editor of a national newspaper for the African and Caribbean community, Lester Holloway worked closely with the King on a special edition. He believes the new monarch can be an ally to black British people. Well, I think that we need to really start by looking at uh, the, the royals' historical role uh, in uh, slavery and colonialism, uh, a lot of which was done in the royals' name. Um, so uh, an apology uh, would be uh, in, in order. A call to a modern monarch to represent his multicultural kingdom. Isabella Higgins, ABC News, London.